Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-Level Further Maths. Here we're looking at how we would multiply complex numbers so we can answer questions from exercise 1c. So, when we looked at adding complex numbers together, we added the real part separately and we added the imaginary part separately. Now in multiplying complex numbers, it's going to be a different technique altogether. You don't just multiply the real parts and you don't just multiply the imaginary parts and get your answer. You have to do a little bit of cross multiplying as well. Effectively the same as when you expand two brackets. Now let me show you one way of doing it that is wrong. This is a classic way that students will get an easy question in an exam wrong. They just do 2 times 4 is 8, 3 times 5 is 15, and they'd leave their answer like this. This is absolutely 100% incorrect. Don't ever think about multiplying complex numbers in this way. We need to treat them as if we were expanding a double set of brackets. So making sure that every part from the left hand side multiplies by every part in the right hand side. So you can do that by any method you want. Foil, smiley face, you've got a box method if you want to. So you would get an answer of 2 times 4 is 8. Then you need to do 2 times 5i, which is 10i. Then 3i times 4 is 12i. And then 3i times 5i, which will give you 15i squared. Now don't forget that i squared, i times i does give you i squared. And what we can do with that is simplify it using a minus 1 there instead. So substitute in i squared with a minus 1. And you can also group together your 12i and your 10i. And then effectively now this just becomes a minus 15. So 8 minus 15 is minus 7. So your final answer here is minus 7 plus 22i. So don't just multiply the real and imaginary parts separately. Think about it as expanding a double set of brackets. Now let's have a look at another one in which uh, students would typically struggle with. 7 minus 4i squared. Now you don't just square the real part and square the imaginary part. No, no, no. What you do, as always, when you've got a bracket that's being squared, is think about that bracket being multiplied by itself twice. So 7 minus 4i times 7 minus 4i. And then apply your expanding brackets method. So 7 times 7 is 49. 7 times minus 4i is minus 28i. Minus 4i times 7 is minus 28i. And minus 4i times minus 4i, or two negatives will make a positive 16, and i times i will give you my i squared. Now the i squared here, remember, can be simplified to make a minus 1. And we can group together the two minus 28i's. <clears throat> so here we're going to have minus 16. So in total here we're going to get 33 minus 56i. Okay, so that's how we would square a complex number. You can also do this on your calculator, so you'd need to go to the menu button, and then it's option number 2 to get you into complex numbers mode. You know you're in complex numbers mode if there's an I at the top of your calculator. And the way you would use the I button is with the purple I that's above the ENG button. Okay, so put in brackets 7 minus 4I squared, and you get your answer. So, another thing that they could ask you to do is expand three brackets. Now, how would you expand three brackets at GCSE? Well, effectively, you would just ignore maybe one of the brackets to start with and then multiply it in later. So, expanding the two brackets first, <coughs> you would get 8 minus 12i minus 10i plus 15i squared. Simplify i squared with minus 1 and you get minus 7 minus 22i. Now what we're going to do now is bring the 1 plus 3i back in, so it's now going to simplify to a problem of minus 7i minus 22i times 1 plus 3i. So expand the brackets as you would normally, so minus 7 minus 22i um, minus 21i and um, 
minus 66i squared. Simplify your i squared with a minus 1, so that negative 66 will now turn into positive 66, and we'll get a final answer here of 59 minus 43i. So that there is how you would expand um, three brackets of complex numbers. All right then, so uh, let's just have a look at what we would get if we do now higher powers of i. Now i cubed, how could we separate this up into things that we know? We could separate this into an i squared times i. <clears throat> i squared obviously being minus 1, so it's minus 1 times i, and we'd simplify that just to minus i. So i cubed is minus i. Uh, i to the 4, well how could you split this up and simplify this? Well you'd split this up into an i squared times i squared, and then both of those are just minus 1, so minus 1 times minus 1 is just back round to 1. So effectively what we have here is i to the 4 gets you back to unity, or 1. So something else that you could expand here, 2i to the power of 5. Well, How would you expand this bracket here? Well, you would do the power of 5 to both of our units here. Now, we can only do this because we've got a single value inside our bracket here. If we had some 2i plus 4, for example, we'd have to expand all of those 5 brackets. But in this case here, it's just 2 to the 5 times i to the 5. Now, 2 to the 5 is 32, and splitting i to the 5 up, in the i squared, i squared, and i will help us simplify the i squareds to minus 1. Minus 1 times minus 1 will make a 1 again, so that would be 32 times the i that we have at the back here, so that's 32i. Alright then, your turn to have a go at these two questions here then. Pause the video and try them out. Right then, let's have a look at uh, the first one here then. So it's 5i times 3 plus 4i. Let's expand the brackets using expanding the bracket method. So 15 plus 20i uh, plus 3i. And then it's 4i squared. Now, i squared will simplify to minus 1. So that's now effectively a minus 4. So it's going to be 11 plus 23i. Let's just check that on the calculator, type it in, and you get 11 plus 23i. Question 3 here now um, is a expanding brackets where we've got some algebra inside the brackets here. So let's expand the brackets and then hopefully we'll set our answer equal to 25 minus 39i. So we're going to expand the brackets and get a plus a b i plus 3 i and then it's going to be plus 3 b i squared. Now this thing here is going to equal 25 minus 39 i eventually but first of all what I'm going to do is <clears throat> simplify the i squared to minus 1 so it's going to be a minus 3 b grouping together the real parts of this number, plus a, b, plus 3 on the i part. So what I've done here is I've just factorised out the i when we group together both of the imaginary parts. Now what I'm going to do from here <coughs> is a little bit of complicated um, algebra work in that now what I've got to do is form two simultaneous equations. So if a minus 3b is the real part of my complex number on the left and 25 is the real part of my complex number on the right, then a minus 3b must equal 25. The real parts on both sides of the equation must be equal to each other. And exactly the same with the imaginary parts. The imaginary part on the left-hand side of my complex number must equal exactly the same as the imaginary part on the right hand side of my equation. So minus 39 here. <clears throat> I've dropped the i's from both sides because it's just the imaginary parts that I need, not the whole value. 
Now what I'm going to do is try and solve these by simultaneous equations. So it's a, let's make a the subject of the first one, so 25 plus 3b. Now let's substitute that into the second one here, so 25 plus 3b is the value for a, then times that by b, so a is slotted in here, and then we've got to times it by b, then plus 3 onto it, and we get minus 39. Now expand the brackets here, 25b plus 3b squared plus 3, and let's add the 39 onto the left hand side now. Now all that's left for us to do is try and solve this quadratic equation here. We're going to have 3b squared plus 25b plus 42 equals 0. So what we're going to get here is a 3b bracket, another b in here. So trying to solve it by expanding the brackets here. And what we're going to get is 42 is 6 times 7. So therefore, if we put a 6 here and a 7 here, then what we'll get is 7b and 18b. So that's going to be 25b in total, great. So our two answers here are b equals minus 7 over 3 and b equals minus 6. So now all that's left for us to do now is find the corresponding values of a. So when a is, so when b is minus 7 over 3, 25 minus 7 is going to be 18. And when b is minus 6, we're going to have 25 minus 18 here. So a is going to be 7. So our two pairs of solutions here are a equals 7, b equals minus 6, or a equals 18, b equals minus 7 over 3. Now that got pretty difficult pretty quickly here. So make sure you remember the technique of setting both the imaginary parts on both sides of the equations equal to each other and the imaginary parts of the equations on each side equal to each other and forming two simultaneous equations there and remembering your knowledge from solving quadratic equations at GCSE um, you can find the answers to these sorts of problems here you are going to be able to, you are going to need to do these quadratic simultaneous equation problems so practice them uh, practice them using questions from exercise 1c persevere through the difficult ones and ask your teacher for help if you need any. Right, thanks for watching.